so um, when you're using the wide blades and the wide combs, I haven't used a wide blade with the clipper vac yet, but we're going to do the combs. When you're using the wide ones, number one, on um, any of these combs, don't put them on with your clipper blade running. Always put them on when it's not running. And just turn your suction down just a little bit so it's not like... Because then you're going to pull all the hair up from the side and suck it in. So, here we go. He gets an A comb on his legs with the clipper back. And this is awesome. Slides right through. And I'm going to have his whole leg done in like, I don't know, what was that? Five swipes? Yes. I'm go over it again just in case because I've got my vacuum turned down and I'm paranoid and I'm just funny like that, but I'm not <laughs> getting anything. Okay. And I do his whole legs and his whole uh, little bit of skirt stuff and all that we have left because they like it nice and tidy like that. And we're going to do the flat dog again. Hold on. Uh, Oh, it wasn't too bad that time. All right. <laughs> so again, pull right off like this. This is this is his version of the suburban trim. We want a little bit of fringe, but not a whole lot. And this wide blade and wide comb are great. This is just sucking the hair right off. His whole leg is done already. couldn't tell you how much exact time this is saving me, but it definitely feels like less time than normal. Because you're basically, you're covering a third more space than you normally would. Like, I get a whole back of his foot like that. Boom, it's done. Two swipes, and that's his whole hawk. So I'm probably saving, you know, if I had to guess with this wide. I'm saving probably one swipe per three that I would normally. So I'm doing like two. You're saving a third. Like I'm saving a third. I'm gotcha. saving a third amount of time. So I guess if you want to put it into money terms. You could do one more dog for every three that you're doing now with, by using these big wide cones and blades. And I can't imagine, I don't do any big dogs anymore. We've got one golden retriever, maybe we can get a demo on um, that I do a clipper cut on, but I don't do big dogs anymore. So I can only imagine how much time you would be saving using these on a larger dog. Oops. Sorry, buddy. So I'm just taking all of this off and just leaving in a little fringe because that's what they like. I don't know. I didn't count. I think that was four swipes and his leg was done. I'm just being picky. I don't know how much time that was, but that's that all his furnishings clippered. That was not long. That was not long. Not long okay. at all. So the other thing I'm going to do is um, they like his little uh, top knot or his crown a little bit shorter. Huh? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and zap some of that off with the comb. And then I'll scissor down the rest. If you were showing this dog, you wouldn't do that. You would do it, you would card it down and then you would use the thinning shears and you would have more of a, of a crown. But that's what we do for the pet dogs. So yes, it works with the clipper bag. Aww. Now, this is a Hanby. Um, I'll give him a little plug because I've been using his stuff for years and years. This is the Hanby uh, hair vac system. Um, so, 
I can tell you about the other brand names. Uh, I know there's several out there, and I know there's some. I do have one that we're going to hook up um, that I want to use on my other clippers, and I can't remember the name of that, but that'll but be that's in a different video. Just the clipper attachment. Right. Uh, we're still going to be using the, the hand be packed. Right. Back. We're still going to be using the vacuum part, but this is a, it'll be a different head attachment. But this works. Um, despite the fact that this is a lot wider, as long as you turn your turn your suction down a little bit, it just still sucks up all the hair, but it doesn't leave any lines. So they do work with the clipper back. Yay! Awesome. Okay. So now we're gonna do the bottoms of his feet and around the edges of his feet, which a lot of people call a bevel, um, even though it's not full coat. Um, I'm still going to call it a beveled foot because the operation is the same for uh, Shih Tzu's or anything you want to make that nice little round foot. So you comb everything down just like I just did and then you go around the outside edge of the foot flat like this. You can do it with curves, um, kind of like a moderate curve like I have. Um, you can do it with straights, you can do it whatever you want, as long as you go around the outside edge and take everything off the bottom of the foot. Don't go up, just go flat around the bottom. Don't go across the pad like, don't go across the pad of the foot like this because look what's in the way. The pad. The pad of the foot, you're going to cut it. So you always go flat around the outside edge like this. And once you start doing that and getting in the habit of doing it, you realize that when you set the foot down, you're almost done. Oh, nice. Okay, so comb everything down again. And then you can take those same curves or whatever you want. Um, I prefer my extreme curves for this can see they have a really what we call an extreme curve. If you want to know where to get those, just con contact me privately. Um, but I go flat around the foot, as flat as possible. And then I turn it up a little bit and give it more of an angle and do it again. Now, if this was a show cocker, we would do this four or five times because there's a whole bunch of hair down here. Um, but with this little short suburban trim, you usually only have to do it once or twice. And that's how you get a nice round foot. Additionally, you need your nails to be pretty short. If your nails aren't pretty short, you're not going to get this really, really round foot because you're literally using the nails as a guide when you go around the edge of the foot. In the front. Yep, you can do the front too. Uh, that's what you're using is the guide in the front, is the nail is. Yeah, the edge, the very edge of the nail. Now I can try to do this foot from underneath if you want to try to do or it I that way. Or I can come around and you do you the one on your side. Whichever you want. It. Come around be easier. Do the front on your side. Take your comb, go up in like this, and then refluff the top so you don't take that hair off. And then go around the outside edge. See, I have a tendency to get a lot of that off when I do my clipper work on the pad of the foot that saves time. I shave all of that because I'm used to it, but a lot, of, a lot of people will have a lot of hair still left in here. Just right flat on the bottom of the foot, not up like this because you're going to take off too much on the side. Right flat around the bottom of the foot. And then set your foot down, comb everything down, go flat right next to the nail, and then turn it up a little bit and do it again. 
you pick the foot up and scissor it, you're going to pinch it. Go over to nice. the other scissor. side. I just make this straight down to the elbow. That's what I do. Kind of like a terrier underline. You can make it rounder if you want to. It doesn't, it kind of doesn't matter at this point because it's a pet trim. Just as long as you neaten it up so there's not a bunch of wonky hairs sticking out that you missed. God. Don't send anything out not finished. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. Okay, so now we can go over. To How's that? That's pretty good. You're gonna do the other rear? Yeah, I'm gonna fix this. Okay. So we missed, uh, we can see now that we've got him turned around that we missed a little bit of hair right here. Just gonna Hold tidy on. that up. Anything that you can see sticking out from the back now because you're at a different angle like we talked about before. All your pet people want a nice tight rear end. They don't want all that stuff sticking out generally for the poop to stick to. Show you how nice and tight that rear is. Okay, so now we're gonna pick that foot up. Comb everything down. And you can see I got a lot of that stuff off when I did my clipper work uh, for doing the pad. But pull that through with your comb real gentle. See if anything sticks out. Or comb the top so you don't take all that off. And then just go around the bottom of the foot flat. Don't take anything off the sides yet. Okay. And when you do that, and you set the foot down, you can see you're pretty much almost done. You now have the, I'm going to turn him so you can look. See, Come now on. you have the shape already, just from taking off the bottom of the foot. And just go flat, all the way around. If you've got a dog that dances around, you can lift up the opposite leg. Like if he was dancing around, I would lift this up like that. So he has to stand on that foot. But he doesn't because he's used to me doing it. He stands right there. He's a good boy. Flat all the way around. And then lift up just a little bit so you get more of an angle. All the way around. And that's how you do a beveled foot on pretty much everything. Now, if he was in full show coat, we would have this foot would still be this tight but we'd have a whole bunch of hair out here so we would still be doing this again two or three more times so that we could get that nice big wide bevel and we will have a show cocker at some point that we'll do that on but everybody was asking about bevels on a pet dog so I said that I would do that for you guys so now we got that nice tight little round foot you can see it and it's round and not pointed. If you pick the foot up and scissor, that's how you get the, the pointy little hair foot in the front. Okay, now we're gonna clean up his underline on this side. Just get those extra little hairs you missed. Neaten it up so it looks nice. Straight down to the elbow like that is what I do. You can round it, you can whatever you want. At this point, you're just making a fake, kind of a fake skirt. Cleaning up any little hairs you missed. to the other front foot. Again, comb everything down. We've got a little hair sticking out on this one here, so we'll be able to get that. Take your comb, go in between the toes a little bit. Gentle. Fluff the top back up. Go around the outside edge. Flat with the bottom of the foot. Set your 
foot down. Make sure it's pointed the right direction. Not being lazy. And go flat. Even if you're not taking the water off, go flat because you're getting more than you think. And then lift up so your shear has a little bit more of an angle. I think he's falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and clean up some little stuff you missed. the little extra hairs that you always have even when you do a clipper vac with a comb. Okay. Okay. And that's the side view on the Suburban Pet Short Cocker. Okay. So, what we did previously when we did his face is we shaved over his eye. Around the corner, around the top of the crown, around the base of his skull, and then we took this off with the clipper comb because he's a pet dog. And now, really, what we want to do is we want to lay this flat. It's supposed to accentuate the fact that they have a dome top skull. If you have clients that don't like this, then that's fine. Shave it off with the ten blade. I used to have their other cocker. I, sh I took it off with a ten blade, but they do like to have a little bit of a crown. So basically what I like to do is I like to take the nurse and go all the way around the edge to blend it into the clippered part so it looks more natural. It doesn't look like there's a clipper line there. And you can either keep combing it or you can Keep brushing it with your brush, whatever you want. Just again, we're just right now just going right around the whole edge and blending it into the clippered area. So that it looks like it grew that way. See? Come right around the front too. And just keep working all the way around until you get that line from the clippered area into the crown blended. So it just kind of looks like it goes into the little bit longer part. Am I making sense? Yes, that's okay. looking really nice. All right. And then I look at him from the front and I see, you know, that looks that, that looks like a little bit wonky. Now we've got the outside blended. What we want to do is make the rest of this look decent and it's going to end up being a little bit short because we want it to last to the next groom. So we're going to just come right in like this. And again, we're kind of blending to the outside, if that makes any sense. And I know you said before, mm -hmm. uh, how long is next groom wanted? Six weeks. He six gets weeks. groomed every six weeks. So now that we've done so that, that was edge, six weeks of hair growth that you started with. Yes. I took the clipper comb over it and whacked about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or so off just to save me some scissor time. And now we're just going over the top of the, of the uh, skull and blending it down shorter. When we do these show dog, I'll show you that we, we card this and we remove undercoat when we make it lay flat and the only thing we scissor is around the outside edge. So that it's a bigger, it's a bigger top knot or a crown, what they co cockroach call it a crown. So it's a bigger crown to make it more accentuating the top of the top skull. Especially if they need more top skull. If they got kind of a flat top skull, they make it a lot, a lot more. So we're just kind of making this lay flat so it accents his cute little round head. Like so. Like his ears kind of short to go with his short haircut. Right. But your rule of thumb 
when you're doing cocker ears is that they should not fall below the point of the shoulder. The point of the shoulder is that front bone that sticks out right in front of their shoulder. So if you're doing this and you've even when you've got a show cocker, you don't want it longer than that because it shortens their neck and it makes them look dumpy. So um, that's the rule, but you can make them as short as you like. And he gets his trimmed every six weeks. And so I, I hold the heat ear as naturally as possible the way it would lay. And then I start from the back and I just go all the way around to the front. And the other little trick that you can do, because a lot of times this front part here gets in their food and gets in their mouth and stuff. So if you pull it up this way, comb it down, you can trim right along the edge like this without taking any length off, but you can keep that back from out of their mouth. Okay, a lot of hair off. Nice. Oh, let's look at the so, difference in the ear. So it still looks cute. Well, not quite done, but. Well, no, but I just want to so, see if you, yep. So it still looks see cute. That one's a lot longer, guys. But it looks longer. And you're not, but you're really not losing any length. Yes. But you're taking the food. But you're taking water. this off, so it's out of their food, and some mostly out of their water, and they're not getting goo goo in there. Okay, so we do the other ear. Again, hold the ear like it normally would. Don't go like this. Just let it kind of fall, and just hold it like it normally goes. And then on this ear, because I'm right-handed, I do the front first, like I did on the other side. I just go straight down the front, and then I curve around the bottom. What was that, Chance? I know. And then I usually end up having to come from back here again, too, because I'm right-handed. So whichever handed you are, you're going to have the opposite one always gives you a little trouble. And that's really normal. Now is that way lower than his ear flap? What do you mean? Than the ear leather? Sorry, not no. the flap, but... His ear leather is right there. Right there. Okay. His ear. They, their oh. ear leather actually should reach the end of their nose. Okay. So if it's shorter than that, generally you grow more hair to make it look like that, but his ear leather is actually right there. And if you haven't done this before, you can cut the edge of the ear off. So yeah, right, you have to be really careful. You need to be very and if you notice, I always uh, run my hands down. If you pay attention to what I'm doing and not what I'm just saying, you see me go like this, and that, and the then edge. I go, oh, there it is, and that's how I know how to gauge. Now, if you're new and you don't know how to gauge yet, run your finger down and leave it there, and then trim. Because then you know exactly your where your fingers are. That's the edge of his ear. So you won't be cutting their ear. You can do the same thing on the front too. You can do like this and run your finger up to the edge of the ear so you know right where it is. Um, but I've been grooming for 25 years so I go like this and I know the edge of his ear up here because it's this shape. And I just follow it or I go like this before I trim and I know where it is and I can gauge it. Beautiful. And then I look from the front. The other thing you can do, you can get him to turn for us here without going flat. The other thing you can do is you can pull your ears forward like this, and you can look at them and Thank see you. if they're the same length. Oh, okay. Let me look from the side. They got a better view of that angle. Okay. Do that one more. The time. other thing you can do is you can have them face you. And you can pull the ears forward and you can look and see if they're the same length. Perfect. And you can look from the side and I've noticed that this ear is a little bit longer. So I'm going to take about another quarter of an inch off of it. But that's, I always check it like that before I'm done. Because when you hold them up like that for me, when I hold them up like that, I can see, I can make the, the comparison from the side or from the front, you can you can look down and you can see that they're the same length. Okay.
Okay. And there's Handsome Chance. Handsome Chance. Say hi, Mommy and Daddy. And he's like, ah, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you to Howard and Leanne for letting Chance be our model dog today. He's been fabulous. And he's, as you can see, he's not thrilled, but he's a very good boy. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I don't good like boy. it too much, but I'm a good boy. Yeah. Okay. Buddy.